<clears throat> Coloring in open tunes can be a lot of fun when everything's working well, but every once in a while issues come up. The most common ones that I've encountered are when the level palette won't make a new style, when a new style is visible in the palette but not in the viewer, when the fill tool doesn't fill, and finally when colors seem to just vanish from the level palette. For some of these we'll do a little recap, for some we'll show some new techniques, and for some we'll even see some odd behavior in the program. So let's start from the top of this list with the level palette not making a new style. <clears throat> so here we've got the strong thundercluck. Looking about the way that I feel about technical difficulties and down here in the level palette, if I click on the new style button, I'm not getting any results there. So a couple clues to notice right off the bat. Uh, the level palette says no styles and the level strip says no current level. Uh, remember, we need to have a current level selected in order to work with that level's colors. And what's happened here is at some point I clicked on a blank cell that didn't have any content in it. So we don't have a current level selected. Uh, if I click on this cell that has our drawing in it, then note we've got a current level now and we can see the swatches for that level. So at this point, I could click on this new style button and that would successfully give us a new style. But the other thing to keep in mind is this new page button right next door uh, looks awful similar. I mentioned it before and let's take a closer look at it now. If we click on that by accident, we're not gonna get a new style. You might notice each time we click that, we've gotten another tab here in the level palette. Uh, if you don't notice that happening and you just rapid fire, click, 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 Watch out, sometimes you'll end up with a lot of tabs without realizing it, and that doesn't do any harm, but it can feel disorganized. So these tabs uh, would allow us to organize our palette styles into categories, which could be useful. Uh, we could sort styles into these, for example, if we had multiple characters in a level and each one needed its own collection of colors. But if that's not the case here, uh, if we just want to keep all of our level styles under this default colors tab, then we don't need these additional pages. So if you've created some by accident, you can always just right click on the tab and choose delete page to get rid of it. Again, pages can be useful if you intentionally want them, but if you create them by accident, it's best to wipe them out so you don't have a bunch of extra clutter here. Okay, now that we've got all that covered, I could either use the new style button to make a new style as desired, or if I want to avoid that button confusion, Again, another option is to just right click and choose new style there. All right, next up, let's talk about when a new style is visible in the palette, but not in the viewer. So back to Thundercluck here, we've got our color two that I just created, and let's say I want to make this red to fill in the waddles and comb. So with color two selected over here in the style editor, I'm just going to take my saturation slider and crank it on up. Looks like that's already giving us a red hue. So let's start with that. And I'm going to double click, again, good organization habits, and we'll call this red fill. And then I'll tap F to switch to my fill tool. I'm going to click on the comb to fill it in, and I'm not getting any result. Uh, so there are a number of reasons the fill tool might not be filling. Uh, we'll talk about more in a second, but one more thing I want to show here. If I tap B for my brush tool and then try to draw a line, we can see that line kind of show up for a second, but then it's gone. So the issue here isn't just that the fill tool isn't filling, but this style isn't showing up at all in the viewer. And the reason for that is the style's transparency. So again, little recap from our intro, notice these checkers down at the bottom of the swatch. Uh, when we created this new style, it came in as a clone of color zero, which means it inherited color zero's transparency. Uh, also, if we look in the style editor, we'll see that the A value for alpha is at zero. So if we take the slider and drag it all the way up, or if you manually click on this value and enter its max 255. Now we've got full opacity for our style again. Uh, we can see the fill on our comb and we can also see that line we tried to draw earlier with the brush tool. Since we don't want that line, I'm gonna tap S for my select tool, select the line, tap delete to wipe it out. And to finish the job, we'll tap F for the fill tool, fill in the waddles, and now we're ready to move on. So next, let's talk about more reasons why the fill tool might not fill. Uh, moving on with our example here, I've created another style to use as a gold fill in the neck and head area. Got that style selected, got my fill tool active, but if I click on the neck, I'm not getting a fill there. So first up, let's check on that transparency. Not seeing any checkers in the swatch. The alpha value is all the way up, so that's not the issue. Another thing to check is your settings. So since this is an area that I want to fill, I want to make sure my fill tool's mode is set to areas. Then also want to make sure that selective, onion skin, and frame range are all unchecked 
unless I specifically want any of those. So if your transparency and your fill settings are all good to go and you're still not getting a fill, the issue is probably that OpenTunes is detecting a gap in the lines so the shape isn't considered enclosed. And that means it won't fill. In this case, let's in on a little secret here. Uh, we could close this gap up by editing the lines and that would solve our issue. I'll show that in a second. But one other thing I want to demonstrate here, if we click on view and then fill check, this can be useful for previewing which shapes are eligible to fill. So we saw some things become gray here. That's not actually changing the color of these areas. If we were to export this animation, it wouldn't come out gray like this. Uh, the gray is just a preview to let us know what areas can be filled. So with fill check selected, we can see that the helmet, the comb, the waddles, and the eyes are all eligible to fill, but not the neck and the head area. And again, that's because of the gap. <coughs> One other interesting thing to note here, if we adjust the fill tool's max gap setting, at some point there's a threshold where that area is considered either enclosed or not enclosed, depending on how much of a gap OpenTunes will allow on the lines. So if max gap is high enough that this area is considered enclosed, then we can turn off our fill check by clicking view and unchecking fill check. Uh, now with that off, we can see the actual colors of our drawing, and with the gold fill selected and the fill tool active, now if we click on the neck, we'll get a successful fill there. So that max gap can be a quick fix for tiny gaps if you don't want to edit your lines, uh, but if I don't want to rely on max gap, my other option is to get in nice and close here, tap C for the control point editor, and adjust the lines, and now the shape is fully enclosed. Now if we zoom back out and apply a fill, since we've made sure that the shape was actually enclosed, that'll remain stable no matter what our max gap setting is. So I'm just gonna set that back to the default 1.15. <clears throat> that said, every once in a while, there's a case where a shape appears to be totally enclosed, but OpenTunes perceives it as having a gap and changing settings doesn't seem to help. This can be unpredictable. So for this tutorial, I was planning on just faking it basically and pretending there was an area I couldn't fill, uh, but it happened for real with Grumpy Thundercluck here. Uh, so I've moved ahead with my styles and fills and everything was going great until I got to this last eye area. But with my blue fill style selected and my fill tool active, if I tried to click on that area, I'm not getting any result. Uh, weirdest thing, if I click on view, fill check, uh, a moment ago, that area was previewed in gray as good to go. But now with the fill check activated, for whatever reason, that area is no longer considered eligible to fill. Uh, as far as I can tell, this kind of inconsistency is just a bug in the program. I think that's why some people prefer coloring with raster levels, which we might talk about in a future section. Uh, but sticking with vectors here, this isn't ideal, but fortunately there's a workaround. I'm going to click view and turn fill check back off. And since this area is not responding to the fill tool, what I'm gonna try is I'll tap B for my brush tool. And then with a single brush stroke, I'm going to draw around the perimeter of that shape. Uh, I tend to find that OpenTunes does a better job of recognizing shapes as enclosed if they're drawn with a single stroke like this. So with that done, we'll try the fill tool again. And now we've got it filled in. So the issue now is if we pull back a little bit, this eye is looking pretty different from this one because that new brush stroke we drew is layered on top of the previous outlines and those outlines are what we actually want on top there. Uh, what we can do to fix that is tap S for the select tool and then click to select that brush stroke. And as we've talked about in the cell shading section, if we hit control starting bracket, then we can move that brush stroke to the bottom of the stack for this layer. So again, it's not ideal when this kind of situation comes up. Uh, Thundercluck doesn't look too happy about it, but with that workaround, we can still get to the desired end result. And for the record, if anybody has any idea what might be causing this kind of issue other than a bug, I am all ears. Uh, any input would be welcome there. <coughs> couple bonus notes here. I've uh, reverted back to a previous version of this file because after doing that last take, I read a couple other tips to try in this kind of situation. One was to just close and reopen the file, and the other was to try grouping your brush strokes. So I'm gonna show real quick what I found trying those out. Uh, for closing and reopening the file, not a guarantee, but that actually did seem to help here because now if I try to apply the fill, it's working without any of that uh, trickery I was showing earlier. 
Out of curiosity, I also wanted to see what would happen with grouping brush strokes, so I'm going to undo that fill, tap S to switch to my select tool, and I'm going to select the two brush strokes around the area in question here. And if I right click and choose group, kind of step in the wrong direction here, we lost our gold fill for the main neck and head area. Uh, if I switch to my gold fill style and try to reapply that, I'm not getting any result now. Uh, I'm going to try hitting Control Z to undo, and <laughs> uh, we got our gold fill back, but now it's gone into the eye. Looks kind of like Thundercluck's got some jaundice going on here. Uh, I can reapply my eye white fill, but now if I switch back to my blue fill, now this area has gone back to not fillable. Uh, in a future video, we'll talk about what grouping means and why it affects fills, but for now, I'm not finding it to be a reliable fix when the fill tool isn't working. So, my recommendation when this issue comes up would be to try closing and reopening the file, and if that doesn't work, try the single brushstroke approach I was showing earlier. And if anybody does have better luck with grouping brushstrokes, again, any input here is welcome. <clears throat> Alright, now let's talk about when colors become unavailable. This happened to me a lot early on, back before I understood the importance of level management. So let's go back to a work in progress version of that flap animation, and as I scrub through the frames, the colors are all there and looking good until we get here. And not only is this drawing not colored in, but its level palette doesn't have the styles that we could see in our previous drawings. So a couple things to keep in mind for why this happens. Uh, first, note over here in the X sheet, all these drawings are in the same column, but that doesn't mean they're in the same level. Uh, remember, columns are just how content is arranged in the X sheet, while levels are collections of drawings that share the same palette, regardless of column. So, all these previous drawings were together in a level called Color V2, and they all shared that desired palette, but the drawing we're having the issue with is off in its own level, which appears to have been automatically created with the name F and that level's palette does not have the colors that we want. So, as a reminder for how this happens, I'm going to rewind and show an excerpt from the previous section on the X sheet and creating new frames. Remember earlier when I made a new frame, I made sure to click on this X and draw within that. Uh, that created a new drawing in our current level, which is what we want. We want all of those drawings organized together. You can click on any of these cells and start drawing, but watch the level strip when I do this. If I start drawing here, it's not in the same level as the other drawings we were doing. So, uh, try not to do that. But if you do end up with an accidental level, there are a couple options to resolve the issue. <clears throat> the quick fix is to just copy and paste the styles that we want from our original level into our accidental level. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to a drawing that has the styles we want, then I'm going to click to make sure color 1 is selected, press and hold shift and click on the last style in the level palette. Uh, this should select all the styles in the palette, and then if I right click on those styles and choose copy, then navigate to my drawing that's missing the styles, I can right click and choose paste insert. And now this level will have those styles. Uh, by the way, control C, control V will also work for that, but if you use that, be sure to click in the level palette beforehand so OpenTunes knows to copy the swatches, not the drawing. Uh, so, now that we've got those styles in this level, I can go ahead and apply them to the drawing, and once those styles are applied, even though this drawing is technically in its own separate level, it appears to fit right in with the rest of the frames. Uh, now, even though this method feels pretty straightforward, it does have a drawback. Uh, let's say once I've got everything colored in, you know what, I want Thundercluck's vest and helmet to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to select this brown fill style, and then I'll decrease its value to darken it down. Uh, now if I check the rest of the animation, that change should apply throughout all these drawings that are in the same level, sharing the same palette, uh, but it does not apply to our drawing that's in a separate level. And if we toggle back and forth between our frames, we'll see a discrepancy here that would cause a little flicker in the animation. We can fix this by navigating back to one of the previous frames, selecting that brown fill style, making a note of the number for its value field, then going to our separate level drawing, selecting brown fill, and making that number match. But this process is tedious, especially if you have to do it across multiple frames. So, even though copying and pasting the palette can feel easy at first, it can cause issues down the line. <clears throat> our second option here takes a little more effort up front, but can keep things more organized in the long run, and that is to transfer the drawing from our accidental level back into the original level. 
So to do that, I've reverted back to our drawing not having the desired colors, and I'm going to select the two cells that are in that accidental level, then I'll click on the bar on the side of the cells and drag over sideways to move them to a separate column. So once I've done that, I'm gonna to want to copy the line work here from the cells and paste it into a new cell, and that'll be a new drawing within our original level that has the desired palette. So I'm going to click on my cell with the line work that I want. I'm gonna tap S to use the select tool, and then I'm gonna do a marquee around my entire character here. Uh, make sure that you are selecting the lines so you can see the little dotted line selection for this content. Uh, you don't want to just select the cell in the X sheet. So with that line work selected, if I hit Control C, that'll copy it to the clipboard. And then for a little more visual clarity when I paste this, I'm gonna turn off visibility for this second column in my X sheet. So over here in the X sheet, note up at the top under Call 2 for the second column, there's a little icon that looks like a circle with a square inside it. That's going to toggle the visibility in our viewer here. So if I click that, this level is no longer visible here, but those lines are still copied to my clipboard. Uh, now, if I go over to this X under my previous frames in column one, then hit Control V to paste, that'll paste these lines into a new drawing in this original level with the desired palette. So now, with the cell selected, we're seeing our other drawings in the level strip and our colors in the level palette. Uh, so now that we've got that line work in place, I'm gonna go ahead and color it in. <clears throat> and once that's all filled in, now this drawing fits right in with the other drawings on the same level and shares the same palette. So now that we've come this far, just a little bit of tidying up to do. Uh, for one thing, note we've got a redundant color one that came into this level when we pasted the content from our other level because those lines had the flat black color one applied. Since this isn't part of the final palette, we can go ahead and select that and hit delete. And this warning comes up, basically saying that the color is or might still be in use. Uh, it's a little odd because I'm pretty confident I replaced all uses of that pasted color one, but maybe there's a small dot somewhere that still has it applied. Uh, to keep things moving here, I'm just gonna choose delete styles only to make sure I don't delete anything else by accident. And that wipes out the redundant color one. <coughs> Then a little more cleanup to do in the X sheet. Uh, since we only pasted the drawing into this single cell, I'll need to click on the blank cell below it and then right click and choose fill in empty cells. And then we've still got our old cells from the drawing in the accidental level over in column two here. Uh, if we click to toggle visibility, you can see it's still there. Since we no longer need these cells, we can go ahead and select them and hit delete to wipe them out as well. And once we've done all that, then we've got this drawing added to the original level and sharing its palette. So if I wanted to make any further changes to color, for example, if I wanted to change the eyes, then that change would apply throughout the entire animation without having to edit any frames individually. All right. <clears throat> Confusion with color styles is one of many reasons to be extra careful about level management in open tunes. With that in mind, I want to demo not only how to work with multiple levels, but also some changes we can make to the OpenTunes interface to help keep those levels organized. So that's coming up next. I hope you find these videos helpful, and if so, subscribe for more tutorials and check out thundercluck.com, especially if you have any young readers or fans of animation in your life. Thanks for watching.